new intro what's up nick oh i forget the new intro is like shorter yes the new intro we're used to like 30 <laughs> seconds of intro the new intro is very very quick um hello welcome to office hours if you are joining us for the first time and you don't want to listen to nick or i talk you just want to learn about some hot shortcuts in lightroom control to the right if you're watching this replay yeah. hit control right it'll send you straight to the beginning of this episode um but we do have some announcements some things to talk about and nick we haven't been live in a while we've had some uh some weeks, recap episodes man. oh no it's been three weeks since live i believe right it's it has it's been a little while so hello welcome back yes nick we need to talk about a couple things one what happened to your arm and two yeah what is what let's do that first and then we'll recap what the show is for all of our friends who are new nick what happened to yeah, your arm? So what, what's going I'll on i'll give you guys a little update uh i injured my arm last year pretty bad and uh kind of went on a everything i wanted everything to do before checking out surgery and uh nothing worked and uh tore a bunch of tendons right in the shoulder area so with it being summer with it being out of school and this being the perfect time uh had surgery last friday so it's gonna be me and this uh fun little sling for about five more weeks um and we're learning how to still work at the same time right that's like the hardest part and my doctor's like stay away and i'm like gotta i gotta i gotta get my hands on the keyboard man i gotta get the mouse you know balance so yep well so that's what happened to nick yeah. nick let's talk about what this show is for all of our friends who may be new who may be just coming in for the first time what is the show what are we doing this year we're just over halfway through what's going on yeah, so we are office hours every Friday at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. We started as a fun little kind of like weekly show to kind of help you up your game as a designer in any application and anything you get to do, all kinds of projects. And right now what we're doing is we're kind of in that it's kind of, of 201 our... phase, right? We're kind of getting you to become like a creative hero by the end of the year. And um, I believe we're in a bit of a, a photography kind of boot camp world right now, right? Yes, we are in the middle of uh, talking about photography. Today we're gonna be doing Lightroom and we're gonna be showing you um, how to do a full shoot in Lightroom, like start to finish workflow um, and how to speed up your process a little bit. Um, so I think with that, Nick, uh, do we have anything else that we wanna talk about? What's coming up? Let's talk about that. What's coming up in the next few weeks as we continue our series of Creative Basics? We're gonna help and kind of continue this whole process with photography and Lightroom with kind of a part two from what we're doing today, next week. And then after that, I believe, are we getting back into 301? Uh, yes, yep. So we have yeah. a couple more weeks of photography, talking about masking, um, talking about retouching. We'll get into Photoshop actually next week, move out of Lightroom, and then we're going into our advanced segment, which is gonna be 301. Um, we have uh, Adobe Max, of course, is coming up and is sprinkled in there. Uh, if you haven't checked it out already, Nick, I don't know why we haven't talked about this because it's kind of a big deal. Uh, Adobe Max oh, it. is, yeah, uh, the tweets went out, it happened, and Adobe Max, the site is live. So if you want to check it out, Adobe Max is live. You can go to max.adobe.com and you can register. The dates are 18th, uh, sorry, the 16th through the 20th in Los Angeles, California, uh, down yeah. by both Nick and I. But you can go check this out uh, and kind of scroll through, find out some more information. If you want to know about speakers and you want to do like a control F to find and then type in Andrew. I mean, there's a guy here who's speaking. Uh, at Adobe Max. Look at that like, shot. Like, <laughs> there it is. Um, so I am speaking at Adobe Max. I'm talking about how to do a successful uh, social media campaign. So make sure that you register for my segment. But otherwise, go to Max. It's a really, really great uh, opportunity to network, to get to meet friends. It is in person as well as virtual. Yeah. Um, so there's a little bit of mixing. And yes, someone from our live chat is saying there is also a giveaway for a live pass. There is a giveaway for a pass running as well so Ooh, what a great uh that'd be a great one to snack for sure man. right and oh awesome. here's here's kind of the the headliners stevie Aoki, uh mr bingo we got aaron draplin uh, of course i'll be probably doing another interview with draplin which will be chaotic and fun um and really really great lineup our friend cloudy who is a friend of the show friend of adobe live will be there as well um and halise uh halise has been on adobe live a few times as well so some familiar faces there for you to get an opportunity to meet uh, and get some level up skills from so yeah with that nick would you like to do the honors of uh jumping into our lesson to the chapter marker for all those people that chapter marked 
Uh, Nick, all right, let's do it in three, two, one. Hey guys, welcome to Lightroom part six. <laughs> you did it. Thanks for jumping uh, all of our talking into the chapter. Perfect. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna be yeah. working over on my screen today. Uh, Nick's arm, not so mobile. And Nick, you're gonna be kind of leading the project today and I can kind of right. talk us through as we work. Um, where are we starting, Nick? What, yeah, what's... so I'm assuming the first thing we wanna do here is we wanna import, right? We wanna get everything that you have taken either with your camera or your phone, something that might be on your computer. The first thing we want to do is get them all together and we can like start getting into them, but yep. importing them. So How super easily. So what I did is I actually have just uh, put my photos in a folder and I am going to go in here and do add photos. When I click on add photos, I can come down here and I know they're in the wild goose folder. So today, what we're gonna be working on, uh, let me give you some context, is we're gonna be working on some product photography that I did for one of my clients. This is a real world client. Um, this is a real project. We're gonna be working on it together. <laughs> um, wild Goose Coffee, if you wanna check it out, I also built their website, uh, helped them out with some of their branding as well. But uh, we're gonna be working on some photos that I took for them of their products. Um, and I have these in a folder and I can simply select all of them and then review for import. So they are .arw files, which are right. raw files, which means that we'll just be able to uh, kind of customize them a little bit more. So you nice. can see here, all of these are coming in. So it has some of these are previously added because I have brought some of them in. Uh, but what I want to do is I'm actually just going to add all 14 photos. So usually right. it's going to add them all together. I do want to maybe make an album. So let's see here. Um, let's do new. Let's just do new and let's do um, office hours, wild goose. And this is probably a great thing to do. So they're just not out there loose in the library. You've found one way to kind of consolidate them into a folder, making it much easier to batch. Exactly. Uh, okay, gotcha. Oh, what? Oh, it duplicated. Okay. Let's hit okay. Oh, because are they already in there? Yep. Uh, so that is how you import. Uh, and you'll actually see down here that it's made a wild goose folder, right? I made the album and <laughs> I wanted that folder, all those photos to go in there. So I had imported them before, but what I can do is I can come back and find where those are, which I believe that they're in this 2021 folder. Nice. Yep. There they are. So we can see right here, we have all of these wild goose photos and these are literally taken on my friend's coffee table. We set it up, did the lighting and took them all using my camera. So I'm yeah. going to select all of these, just click and drag to select all of them. And I held shift. I'm going to right click and go to, um, I want to put them into that folder. So right. I can add photos to an album and go to OH wild goose office hours, wild goose, or I could click and drag them over there. I'm just going to add them one. to this folder. Gotcha. So real quick, we are on Lightroom mo um, desktop, correct? Yes, yes we are and on Lightroom, not the, Lightroom Classic. Yes, and this is the one that's web-based or this is the one that is Lightroom, the app that we've opened? This is the app. Um, it also syncs with classic. mobile. Uh, it is not Lightroom Classic. This is just regular gotcha. Lightroom. Um, so and we I can come into our, right here, we have our wild goose. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can just reset these so we're not, oh, go for it. doesn't matter. All right, so we have them all imported right here. And what I'm gonna do to start out is I'm just going to kind of find the photos like them, that right? I like, right? We wanna review them. Um, Good. And to do that, we can do it a couple ways. Uh, the way that I like to do is you just select one of them and then you click right down here on this mm -hmm. detail, right? So that's gonna give us the full size detail or I can hit F. So doing F is going to go. display it in full screen. Okay, so what I'm about to do here is we are going to uh, pick out our favorites and our least favorites, right? So in this folder, we have 61 photos. A lot of them, uh, we have photos like this, we have photos like this, a lot of similar setup, uh, but looking a little bit different. I'm gonna go through and yeah. pick out my favorites. Um, so the idea here is you wanna rank them and find some way to have them marked while you're reviewing, right? So yep. you can kind of go back and go like, Oh, here were my favorites. This is just a great way to look at them and kind of see. And I'm assuming there's options to look at these things differently too, right? Like in comparison view and things like that. Exactly, yeah. So let's go through and let's just pick out the ones that I like. And what I like to do is I go into full screen mode and I'm actually gonna use hotkeys. And those hotkeys yes. are one, two, three, four, and five. Um, that will set the star ranking, right? So this photo Ooh. I really like, uh, think it looks good. So let's go ahead and hit five here and watch what happens. 
So you can see nice. right down here, it sets it to five stars, right? You can see as I change Perfect. that, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna set it to five stars and I also really, really like this one. So I'm going to hit Z and that is going to flag it as a pick. And that just means Good. that I'm picking it as a photo that I like. So two ways to do it right off the bat, one through five, but you also get to do the Z and that gives it a, a that's like, you've already called it one of your picks. Yep, exactly. Perfect. So um, depending on the shoot, I'll rank them one through five stars and then I'll also do picks and not picks. Uh, I know that this one, is not going anywhere. Um, and so very quickly, I don't like, the focus isn't great, I don't like the shot. Yeah. And so I'm going to hit X, and what that does is it's going to flag it as rejected. So you can see Perfect. that Z is a pick, and X is rejected. So it will reject that, and it just takes it out of the lineup, right? So I won't have to worry about it. Like it's not even worth rating at this point because you looked at a few things that you thought, no, not probably gonna work, yep. right? And what yeah. I might do here actually is we're gonna do two passes real quick. And this is what I like to do to speed up my workflow is we use that Z and X to basically pick ones that we like or we don't like. Mm -hmm. And this is just the initial first, very quick um, kind of scroll through. I'm just using the right and left. And you can see if I have one that I like, I'm gonna hit Z and that's gonna flag it as a pick. And if I don't like it, like this one feels a little too close up, I'm gonna hit yeah. X and it's just gonna toss it out, right? So I'm gonna go really quickly through here. I already have one that I like of that. That focus isn't good. And we're just trying to keep a very quick eye on what uh, kind of the focus and the clarity of some of these images. Perfect. Totally getting hungry for some candy right now, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> can't throw that stuff in front of me and not make a difference. Right. right? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Sure. That no. looks clean. Yeah. No. Yes. Oh, we got a lot of ingredients on that one. That looks good. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. Reject. So that's a marshmallow mango blueberry? It is. Yep. Marshmallow wow. mango and blueberry. Okay. Oh, that one looks good. Toffee and yes. uh, milk chocolate, I believe. So that one's out of focus. Kill it. Save it. Kill it. So this can be very, very helpful when you're working through a ton of photos, right? Like yeah. this, we have uh, just a ton of photos here. Uh, this one's creme brulee. What I like about this too is, is like technically... We probably were doing this somewhere on a pad, pad of paper, writing down the last four numbers of that photo, giving it a ranking, ditching it or whatever. But to be able to do this now with the app, it's it tells you it was made for you. Like, right, this is a perfect, perfect solution to pick and choose and find the best. Yep. And I'm, I mean, it's super quick. So now I'm back at the beginning. So I have mm -hmm. all of my photos here. And now I can come to my filter um, and I can turn on so that it only shows me ones that have been flagged. Uh, and so what I can do is let's go ahead and do, um, let's do star rating. And I can actually turn it on. Uh. So it's only ones that have been flagged as picked and only ones that have uh, the rating. Numbers. Right. Great. So we have these here. You can see this has no stars, but if I come all to the end, we should have some here. Yep, this has five stars. And so it shows me right. which ones have stars that I want to start working with. Um, something looks else that good. I can do with this is it looks like there is a, a white balance to all of these. And I wanna go ahead and make sure that as I work on white balance, it's gonna allow me to sync them across all of the photos. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and do, uh, let's pick one of these to kind of save and one to get rid of. Okay. So we're gonna go side by side right here. There you go. So you just click the icon with the side by side to two squares. Yep, right there. So it's gonna show us right. a comparison view that is side by side. And from here, I can actually click on either side and then place whatever image I want into that side. Okay. So let's say that I want to do two of these side by side right there. You can yes. see, I can see, okay, this one, maybe I want to do that one. This one's a little tilted. This one is a little out of focus. And if I really wanna see, I can come down here in the corner and click on parallel. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna lock the zooming. Okay. So that when I zoom in here, you can see that it's parallel zooming to what that image is. And you wow. can very quickly see the one on the like, left is out of focus. 10 times better on right, the right. Right, one on the right is a million times better, yeah. So as you scrolled and moved, it would move the other one to mirror 
the same positioning basically. Exactly. So the orientation, we can do the same thing here. We can split it so that we have a view that's going top to bottom. We can go left to right. And we also can swap sides if we want to on that comparison view. That's great. So this is a very I, easy way this. yeah, to see. And so here I can flag this. All right, we're back. There we go. Oh boy, we're back. <laughs> Mark was wide awake. Look Sorry at that. about that. <laughs> all right, all, all right. right. So we're back and we have the side-by-side -side comparison going on here. We can swap sides if we need to as well. And it just allows us to make those kind of quick uh, edits uh, to be able to see what's happening on either side. Now, yeah. let's go in and let's start. Uh, let's start really playing around with edits here. Good. Okay. And you're at a point where you're feeling pretty confident with what you've chosen. You've got your your ones or your you know your your A's there as well. So now it's time to get in and do a little editing. Yep. Exactly. So All right. we're gonna hop in here and we're gonna do some editing. Uh, let's go ahead and do star ranking. There we go. Perfect. And now I can come in and do some editing. Uh, someone says someone says it's muted. Is it muted? Hmm. Do we muted. have audio? Chat, let us know if there's audio. If not, we can fix it. Um, all right. So we are going to continue because I think that it's working. The sound's coming through on my side. Um, okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to start editing. And this is going to be a very quick um, edit is we're going to come up here into the side edit and we are going to go into presets. And with this, there are presets that exist that we could use. And what's happening is it's actually analyzing our photo. So this is a super easy way for you to not have to do a ton of work. It will analyze the photo and then recommend the best preset for you. Mm -hmm. It's giving you like an auto choice. Yes. So okay. you can see they're a little warm. We've yeah. got some, ooh, very drastic here. Mm. So let's scroll and through again, and this, see. This is where you can always go back to your brand kind of like, you know, definite, ooh, that looked great. Your brand definition, you know, is it supposed to be bright and cheery? Is it supposed to be dramatic and sophisticated? Like you're, you're finding answers in these presets to what your brand could possibly be. Yep, absolutely. That's great. So I'm not crazy about these that are happening right here. But mm -hmm. what I can do to save time is again, we could go in and we could edit these and you probably thought you were watching this stream and you're like, oh, they're gonna be editing the whole time. We're very much not going to because <laughs> we kind of don't uh, have to. So we're gonna go into this discover panel um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna be able to search four presets to download and then use. Wonderful. Uh, as you scroll, you can see that there are a lot of photos here, but I'm going to go up to uh, right here and I'm gonna click on preset downloadable. Right there, that's gonna add a uh, kind of uh, filter to our uh, photos in Discover. And then we are going to do, um, let's do... Uh, uh, we get a little bit like adding some mood, some good descriptions. Yeah, let's type in coffee. There you go. See Why what not? comes up here. And don't forget, Elizabeth uh, has basically reminded us we wanna look at, back at some of the homework we asked you guys to do. Uh, we saw a ton of it all into our discord channel so we'll take a look at those later today yep i'm gonna type in bright because i want it to be bright and cheerful yes. Ooh, i love what's happening with this this leaf so what's cool is as you hover over these it will show you the before and after so here's the mm. before and then there's the after right so it's you showing know you that yeah you need to see where it came from really yep that's and really cool i love where it's landed and so i'm gonna click save as preset because i think this will work really well for our coffee um, yeah. and we are going to hit all of these pieces. Great. We're just going to so turn on saving. all of those to save it, and we're going to hit save. There you go. Perfect. Now I can come back to what I was developing before by clicking down here in the bottom right. And then that is going to be in our presets panel. So I can come over here to our presets. Where are we? Presets. There. Presets. And I can click on yours. And right here, Bright by Jillian Gonchard. There you go. Uh, that's the one that we just saved. So I can click there and it will save that across the board. Wonderful. Look at that. Looks pretty good. I mm -hmm. like those tones a lot. So the white balance looks a little bit wonky for me, but what I can do is I can very easily come in here and fix that white balance. I can click on the eyedrop tool right here for the white balance selector. And then it's gonna allow me to just pick a white portion, which I know that the front of this bag is supposed to be white. So I'm gonna good. click on it. And you'll see there that it's shifted so that it's not as warm. Uh, it's gotten a little bit too blue, so I can adjust the temp right here. 
just a little bit. And let's go ahead and bump the exposure up just a tiny bit as well. Sure. Whoa, what happened there? Oh, Andrew pulled the exposure all the way down is what happened there. Uh, Hold, please. There we go. So let's go ahead and pull that exposure up just a tiny bit. There we go. That's giving us a nice kind of before and after. We can click here to see the before and after. You can see it's really bringing out those warm tones. Mm -hmm. So as I've done that now, what I can do is I can come into presets and I can actually hit plus. And this is just going to be my coffee revised. So I'm going to do revised yes. coffee. Great. And this is taking everything that you've just fine tuned and now making your own preset to use. Yep, exactly. So now I have revised coffee. And so now I can come to any of my photos and click on revised coffee and it's going to copy those settings all the way across. Um, what I could do as well is I can actually select all of these photos if I wanted. Boop. And then we can click on that revised coffee and it will apply it to those photos. Ooh, that looks really wow. good there. That's really nice. All right, so this looks good to me. Um, this is actually looking really, really good. So what I can do is I'm going to work on uh, maybe exporting. Let's, let's do some exporting or at least some sharing. So let's say that this is the photo that I really like. Um, I probably want to change some of the background, right? Right now it is weird. Uh, it's got a lot of like wonkiness going on. And so I might mm -hmm. want to edit in Photoshop, right? Yeah. Check this out. I can go up here to the share panel and there's a bunch of options here, but what I want to do is I could share this as a JPEG just to get uh, kind of uh, approval from a client. I could send a link to them, but I do want to edit it in Photoshop. So there what I can go. do is I can grab my photo here and we can go ahead and go to file. And we should be able to click on edit in Photoshop. I don't know why it wasn't me edit in Photoshop. <laughs> oh, Andrew. It's gotta be there. Why were we not letting me uh, edit in Photoshop here? Hmm. Control Shift E. That's where I export it to. That's where Photoshop? I wanna be. Oh, it's because I have a bunch of photos selected. Uh, Let me so go like ahead it. and go. deselect Just real one. quick. There we go. All right. That's so where is our photo that we had? Uh, let's see here. Where did you go, Cherry Photo? It's this one. Cool. So we have this here and there we go. With one selected, we can go <laughs> and edit in Photoshop. Now we got it. Perfect. So let's open, uh, and this is where we can start to make some of those uh, minor adjustments. There we go. All right, there. froze up for a second. This is a That'll gigantic work. image. Uh, circle going there. Right, so first thing we wanna do is we wanna make a copy, just Control J is gonna make a copy of that layer right down here behind my face. Uh, so that way we have the base if we ever need it again. Uh, and Nick, let's do, a little, let's do a little quiz. We can quiz the chat as well. Oh, what should I really use bad. to make this, to kind of fix these edges? Uh, what tool could I use to make this on flat white? Ooh, there are a bunch of ways question. I could do this. What do you guys think? Chat, let us know. How do I how do I extract this and make it on flat white? Nick, what would you do? Well, I'm trying. I'm watching in the the our live one is dead, so I'm watching in the replay. So I'm not exactly sure which one you're talking about. <laughs> oh, okay. If you oh, that's right. Okay, cool. Um, so let's hold on. I got you, Nick. There we go. I got a little refresh there. Let's 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 fix this for Nick. Sorry, everybody. Give me just a second. And we are at the point. There he we're is. There we're we back. Go. All right. So Nick can we're see back. the show now. Yes. <laughs> we're back live, everybody. All right. Um. So, what tool would you use to yes. take out the background to kind of isolate this image? Oh, I would do uh, if the uh, image select tool. Yes, we could do that. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and do that and give it a shot and see what happens. Um, I actually think it's going to get pretty close. So we used to have the yeah. magic wand. We used to have uh, the quick selection tool. We used to have yep. all these things. So now the we have object the object selection. selection tool and it's going to analyze this photo. It's going to uh, reel for a second, but it is analyzing right here. You can see, and it is finding yep. the objects in this photo for us. So 
once that's, once that's done, I'll be able to just click on the pieces that I want, like that yep. bag. And I want some of the cherries down here. That was a weird okay. selection. Let me try that yeah. again and it will select. Like a Hershey kiss. I made a that. Hershey kiss. There we go. All right, so that got pretty close. Let me do that selection one more time. And what yeah. I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click and drag around this whole piece down here. And it okay. should pull all of this off of that white background. Uh, the bag is a little too white there, so it may uh, have some trouble. We'll see what happens. I think there was a good enough edge. We'll see. Yeah, not too bad. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and great. mask that by just clicking on my masking tool. When I turn yeah. off the background, <laughs> it's, it's in pretty good. Let's go ahead and drop a color on the back here. Uh, Nick, there's a question in chat if we wanna chat about it from our friend Elizabeth. Yeah, I was just going over that. Do you think we are at that point where taking photos with our phones can turn out better than actually with sub cameras? I, I think most photographers will obviously say no to that, right? There's still the need for the camera uh, that they would use on search certain shots. I know I'm always mesmerized with what real photographers can do. So I would say no, but I think we're, we're blurring that line. We're getting so close. I have done major things in projects that the shots were taken with iPhone and no one ever knew. Yep, absolutely. So I think it's it's a little bit of both. Uh, it's so great to have that powerful tool in your pocket and on the go, but um, there's no, I don't think there's any um, replacement for the high-end studio, the incredible lighting, the camera as well, yep. you know? So we got a pretty good mask here. There are a couple little pieces little that things. are a little bit yep. wonky. So what I like to do is I'm going to go ahead and just control and click on my selection. And then I'm going to come up here to select and go to modify and do contract. And we're gonna contract it by one pixel. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna move this, the selection in. This is a great feature. Because it is. like for years, I never, I would do the feathering or I would try, like how can I just go in? It's basically offset pathing your, your object selection line, right? Yep. Exactly. So it's Love gotten it. just a little bit more of a crisp edge right there. Uh, and I also see a little bit of this halo happening. So I'm going to increase the contrast. And the way we can do it is just right click and then go to, um, uh, where are we? Select and mask. Yep. And this is going to allow me to really play around. So you can see how soft that edge is. I want to go ahead and increase that contrast. And so I'm going to jack that contrast up and that should get rid of that glow. And now that selection, there we go. Yep, it's got rid of that glow for the most part. We've got that bag. It's gotten way better up there as well. So if we zoom out here, that's looking like a pretty tight uh, mock-up right there. Yeah. That's looking pretty that good. All right, great. so let's zoom in and let's look at some of maybe the imperfections that are happening. And I'm gonna go ahead mm -hmm. and save this and let's see what happens. In theory, if I save this, it will go back to, uh, Lightroom. So let's go ahead and open Lightroom and see what happens. It looks like Lightroom is updating currently. And boom, since we edited it, it has updated it. And I can come in here and use some of the tools in Lightroom uh, that I maybe want to fix, right? And so just Great. like we have, whoa, just like we have blemishes, we can actually <laughs> fix a lot of those blemishes in Lightroom by using the healing tools. Yes. So let's go ahead and this healing brush, I'm going to use the brackets to just scale it down a little bit. Great. And I'm going to click over that little highlight that I don't like. Mm -hmm. And you can see it basically has moved that highlight. So if we wanted to, we could click and drag this around and you can see that it's grabbing and replacing pixels from other places in that photo. So if you ever get a weird kind of replacement, you can click and drag. Just move the source. Exactly, right. you can just yeah. click and drag to move the source. So let's say that we want yeah. the name off of here. I can click and drag across here and it should take a source, right? Maybe I want it to be right over here. Right, yeah, so it's a little Maybe it doesn't match, right? So you can see how it's really mm -hmm. just pulling pieces of that image, but I want yeah. it to match that lighting pretty well. Great. So that looks good to me. I also can use my scroll wheel if I want to, uh, to make this larger or smaller. Now, I don't want this kind of uh, hole up here, so I'm just gonna click and drag over that. Automatically, it's gonna find that for me. Looks pretty good to me. And we've got a pretty good look here going. Yeah, not too bad there. So what I want to do is let's go ahead and 
zoom out. Control minus is just gonna zoom out. That looks good to me. We can close our healing brush. And from there, maybe I wanna do uh, the before and after view. So I can click right here and you can see the show original. Oh, it's made a copy of it is what's happened. There you go, yeah. So the original is here, but then we can see the edit that we've done right beside it. So you can see all of the retouching has happened right there. We've gotten the name out of here. Um, and someone is asking in chat another question. Hello, Elizabeth. Yeah. Uh, what's the difference in using Lightroom versus Lightroom Classic? Ooh, that's a good question. So Nick, do you know the benefits of Lightroom? What We've talked about the platform and we were on the go last week. What does Lightroom yes. do that Lightroom Classic does not? That's a great question because we haven't, I haven't dived into classic too much, but I'm a, isn't classic more advanced? Uh, classic is a little more for a like kind of creative professional audience. Lightroom that we're working in now is yeah. one more approachable. Uh, I think the, yeah. the UI and kind of the way that you work is much more approachable. And the cool thing about Lightroom is that it syncs across devices. So we'll take a break from what we're doing right here. And I just want to show you, um, I can come in here and click on 2022. These are all our um, photos that we've used this uh, in the last however long of this show. And these have synced from my <laughs> mobile device. Sorry, I got distracted. Uh, yeah. These are synced from my mobile device. Here's my apartment that I moved into. And I took this in Lightroom on my phone and then edited it and boom, now it's synced into Lightroom. So Lightroom Part Classic, everything. yeah, Lightroom Classic does not sync like that. Um, every photo that I've taken in Lightroom on my phone is here, right? And so I was out and about at my friend uh, Raymond's photo exhibition, and here's the photo of Raymond, right? Here's a photo I took in his exhibition. Yeah. Uh, and I just took these on my phone, and you can see that taking it from my phone, it syncs into Lightroom, and that goes onto desktop into my library as well. So it shares. Um, Lightroom Classic really lives within itself. It doesn't really go many other places. Yeah, so I love the idea that if you're using the app, if you're on the go, Lightroom is just so much better of a compliment when it comes to that. Yep. By having this stuff in there, your library is, uh, it's, you can grab it anywhere you are on any different source. Yep, absolutely. So that's great. Um, let's show a little bit about the sharing and kind of review. Oh, so yeah. let's say that I wanna send this to my client. I can click on this share right here and sure. we can export it, we can do all that, but I wanna kind of show how to get a link. So I can click on get a link it's going to generate a link for me. This is so helpful. Um, and particularly with like, I feel like it's a more professional way to send to the client, you yep. know? Absolutely. So anyone can view, I can click right here to copy to my pasteboard. Um, I can invite them to be a part of this. They can make yep. uh, edits, they can contribute. We can have it so that depending on what they see, we can have the titles. You can put all kinds of maybe your client names here. You can do settings, you can allow them to do their downloads here. And so you can upload all of this um, and have your clients, if you're shooting a wedding, if you're shooting an event, you can put all of your photos there. So I'm gonna hit done. Yeah. It's gonna have this one photo for me right here. And if I go ahead and come into the browser and I'm going to open this in browser real quick. There we go. You can see we have the title here, we have the names and we have our photos for review. So you could have it so that your, your client could download all of the photos. They can review all their photos mm -hmm. here. You can do that directly out of Lightroom, which is magic. Um, and no huge attachment to an email. It's a clickable link so much easier. Exactly. And so if I yeah. wanted to, right, if you sent this to a client who wanted to leave you feedback, um, let me go ahead and sign in real quick and I'll show you guys yeah. how you can sign in for having, uh, for leaving comments because you can leave comments here uh, so that you can review and have quick collaboration with your yes. collaborators. So just One a second. One thing I like about that too is not only is it more professional in a lot of ways, but I think you can capture a much sharper conversation or changes with the client when you do it under this kind of umbrella. Like, have you ever noticed that? Like I get more, they spend more time on it because you can obviously send it with a message like going, here is your approval. Please go over this, give us any comments. It's approved with changes otherwise, you know? And yep. that, that helps us out every step of the way with client relations. Yep, so I just made a comment here. I love the tones on this one. Can we change the background to blue? Um, let's go ahead and do this one. Wow, looks great. 
So now we've left those comments on that share. I can access yes. those comments and I can also come in here and get the information of what kind of photo this is. When it was taken, I took this right before New Year's Eve um, and we can come in, we can report it if it's something bad, uh, but you can do all of that here. And because I am invited to this, I can add photos to this if I wanted as well. So if you're working oh, with a wonderful. client, you want reference, if they're getting new photos in, you can work collaboratively with them in this folder, uh, which is really like, cool. Let's say they have an example of something they're trying to say, I, like, I want a wood texture more like this. They could drop it in there. Exactly. Again, I love taking it off of the email train and doing it in something that's a little bit more slack, a little bit more base camp vibe, yep. the way they've done it here. Yeah. Absolutely. So I can ungroup this stack um, and that's going to go ahead and separate these into two photos and check this out. You can see as I click on these down in the corner, there's a new tab that just has this little comment what? and that is bringing those comments that are happening online from review onto the app, right? So as you work on these, you can be getting feedback in real time. It will sync in real time um, and you can see here. Wow, looks great, awesome. I have all of my information Perfect. from my clients. I can reply to these and just say thanks. And that will show up with this photo everywhere that it is online. Um, so everywhere that it goes, it will stay with that. You can like it. And this is just a really, really easy and great way to collaborate really with cool. people uh, and do review without having to do a ton of That's back and great. forth. Is right? there any other integration sharing platform we should be thinking about at this stage? Oh, is there? Let's go ahead and I take a look. I think there might be something totally different too. So let's go ahead and hit share here. And we're going to select uh, both. Actually, we're going to select a couple of these photos. So I'm going to go back to my... Uh, uh, let's go ahead and go back. Where did it go? Come back to me. Albums. Let's go. There we go. So I'm gonna come back here and I'm going to select my five star picks and then we are going to, Andrew, Andrew, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna kind of click through and grab a couple of these that I think are looking great. So I've selected yep. five or six of them and then we are going to go to share and go to Adobe Portfolio. So this is new, this is brand new. These are called connections. And if you haven't enabled mm. connections, I'll show you how to do that in a second. But we can click here to Adobe Portfolio and we can add to a new project. And we're gonna do this as office hours test. Hit continue. And it will generate that project for me. So it has opened wow. Adobe Portfolio right here. And it is asking me if I want to be able to do that. I can hit continue and check this out. This is my Adobe portfolio and Look all these photos style. are exported onto the site so that I can revise them. Here's, these are projects that I've uploaded to Behance, but all these photos are here. I can come in and edit them. Maybe I want to re, re, uh, rearrange. Maybe I want to edit the style. Let's do two images per row. Uh, let's do a little more space in between. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go ahead and yeah, move. Yeah. Just when you thought that was the only grid layout, you could actually go in there and make it look a little nicer. Yep. Yeah. So we can update live site right there. It's updating my live site. And if you haven't used Adobe portfolio before, um, super easy to convert. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. I can come over here. I can change this page header. Um, and we can, again, whatever we want to add to this, we can add, it's just like building a website. So I do wanna show you, let's show you real quick how to convert. If you've never used Adobe Portfolio and you want to use this with your photos, um, yeah. what you can do is you can go to your Behance profile. So mine is just behance.net slash hawk.co. And then you're gonna click right here and it will ask you to convert to Adobe Portfolio. So these are all yeah. projects that I have uploaded of different things that I've worked on. Um, and let's go ahead feel like and going, feel like we're going back in time. It is right. Uh, let's go ahead and look <laughs> at this villain. Uh, this is a uh, fashion line that I worked with. This is Rick. Uh, he's a fashion designer in LA. So we worked on this fashion line together. I did all the graphics. He did all the design. We did like a runway sh show, photo shoot, all that fun stuff. So I made a case study about it on Behance. Well, I can click right here to create my Adobe portfolio and then I'll be able to choose a template. So let's go ahead and do a new site. Why not? Uh, and we'll do full portfolio. Looks good to me. And then pick one that I like. Uh, let's go ahead and pick, I like this one that has full photos. So I can click and on these this. These are just starting points. They're yep. great to start with and be like, yeah, that's the vibe I'm going for. So I like this theme. I'm gonna click use this theme. It's gonna take everything on my Behance, including those photos that I just did um, and watch what happens. It's thinking. 
it's thinking and it's creating my website and three, two, one, look at that. Andrew now has a website. Uh, and I can click in here. This is just what we looked at. It is the streetwear, but it has converted it into a really nice kind of outline for a website. Uh, I can turn on navigation, change my logos, all of that fun. And you can see here the integrations. We already have Lightroom. We can uh, add albums if we wanted to. We have all of our Behance projects. If we had Adobe Stock, we can also do Adobe Stock on here. If we wanna sell stock, if we wanna highlight some stuff, we can integrate all of that very quickly and very easily using Adobe yeah. Portfolio. Easy. And don't forget too, you could turn, everything's a la carte there. You could turn a few projects off if those aren't supposed to be on the site that you are promoting at that time. Yep. It has full customization there as well, yep. which is great. So I do wanna show one more thing that is like what we just showed. Um, mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and come back into Lightroom and this is something that is a brand new feature. We can come into this discover panel and click on my profile. And look at, this looks familiar. It's basically my Behance, right? Yeah. Um, so what's cool is I can share my edits and other people can use these edits and save those presets. Um, they can kind of, I don't know what's happening y'all. My streaming platform. Uh, it's Friday. It's Friday. My streaming platform has crashed twice during the stream. It never does this. Uh, and it will not <laughs> be know, doing this because I'll be well. finding a new one. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> All right, cool. So we're back. Uh, I can click on share your edit right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to go into recent edits and I can open this and look at uh, maybe the one that I want to show is this cherry. So I can hit there. I can select there and then hit continue. And then I can share that to discover. So when I share this to discover, I'm going to add a title and I'm going to do uh, bright product photography. And we can say uh, the process, uh, we lightened. I wanted to lighten the photo and Are give seeing your screen rich <laughs> qualities. <laughs> oh, sorry, Nick. Uh, all okay. right. So no, we have, I, there it is. There you go. So we have all of our uh, information in here rich qualities. And then from there, the category food. Yes. Um, we probably want maybe lifestyle would be another one. Okay. And then maybe we want it to be fine art. Sure. Uh, we can enable this preset and that is going to allow other people to download the preset and all of the edits that we have used on this. We also could include the location in, in, uh, info. I don't want that. And we can allow remixing, which we'll show you in just a second. That's really cool. So, so name good. your name your presets well, man. Right? Yep. Like, someone might be using them. Yep. So when I submit and share this edit, it now is going to show up on my profile right there. I can share this as a link. So if I wanted to tweet out and say, "Hey, if you want to uh, grab the preset that I created with this photo, you can do that right here. You can share that, and people can download this preset." Uh, now what's cool is you can click on this, and it will show you. Uh, it's still, it's still editing, but I can download this preset once it is fully synced uh, yes. to my profile and use it on a photo, which is really cool. So let's come back to discover. And I do want to show you remixes. This is one more thing that you can do. And remixes are basically a, a great way to practice, uh, a, a great way to try new things and kind of test stuff out. So let's go ahead and this looks good. So let's click on this photo right here. This is a good remix and it will show you kind of the before and after. So when we click on this photo, you can see this is the original here. And then you see all of the different remixes that have happened by different collaborators. Okay. It's That's cool, so right? Great. I love it. So you can see what, what you can wow. do with this photo. And these were all done by individuals? Yep, they're all done by different people that are remixing them. Uh, you can see here remixed by, uh, this is Blickland Photography. If we come over here, uh, PDX Gunfighter. This one, which I really like, Andrew yeah. Mariscal, um, love, love the texture on here. And so if we wanted to, we could do a remix on the original as well and create our own variation. But you can kind of see if you have a photo that uh, maybe is similar to yours, you can see what you can do with it. So let's just type in here, coffee. Mm. And this is gonna show us a bunch of different uh, photos that are remixable. Uh, and see if they have any remixes with them. So let's, this is probably similar to what we have used. 
So let me go ahead and click in here and see if there are any remixes. Oh, and it did have a little icon that I didn't look at. So let me go back real quick. Gotcha. Uh, there we go. This one has three remixes on it. So let's click here. And it will show us, there we go. These three mix, remixes. Ooh, and there's a really good one here. David Sykes. Love this color palette. Oh, wow. Right? So that's a really good yeah, remix. Nice and what's cool remix. is the remixes will actually show their editing process. So I can see piece by piece. I'm not clicking anything. It's showing you piece by piece what they're doing to achieve that look and what they're doing, uh, how they're editing the different panels to create the look that they created. So if you don't just want to copy the preset, you can actually learn how they do it by watching that step by step. It's almost a tutorial. It's so kind of cool to see it, particularly if you're not too like comfortable in making some of those big changes to get that effect. Here you're seeing exactly how it's done. Yes, this is That's this great. is probably my favorite, one of my favorite additions to any mm. Adobe product uh, in a long time. Being able to see how people edit the photos, right? So I loved the edit of this photo right here with the grain. Uh, and I would be so curious as to what they did. And so let's go ahead and click on this and then watch on the right. It will take us through step-by-step step what's happening. So here's the original. So we yeah. cropped it. We, a little bit of contrast, increase the whites, the blacks, mm. the point curves is where we got, see those reds got bumped up. Yeah. The oranges got bumped up. The blues got bumped down. Yep. yep. We added some texture, a little bit of vignette, and then a ton of grain. And that's where we landed. So wow. now I know if I have a photo in this style, I know how to edit it. But again, the great thing is we don't have to edit it because what I can do is I can just save as a preset right here and nightlife in Hollywood looks good to me. We can save it and then I can come into my photos and let's see if I have any nighttime photos in here. Oh yeah, I'd love to see what that would do, what the result would be. Let's uh, see. Let's see what photos I have. Oh, there are definitely some night photos in here. Uh, from a trip that I took. Let's do, uh, yeah, sure. Let's do this one. So this is me and my friends. We went to Disney World. It was great. Uh, so now we can go ahead and grab that preset right here. We had nightlife in Hollywood oh, and apply Lord, that preset. So let's see what happens. So we clicked. It doesn't look like it made that big of a difference, actually. Let me hover over. There we go. So that's the bright one. Here's the nightlife. Yeah. There we go. And the amount we probably want. Ooh, that's too much. There that looks go. pretty good, yeah. though. Yeah. So we've applied that. And let's do the before and after. So there's the original. There it is with that nightlife kind of put over it. I love what it's doing to the colors on the Spaceship Earth. Yeah. It's almost clustering a few of them together and doing some weird effect to them like a reflection. That's yeah. really cool. So again, we did that. I didn't do any editing there. We literally found a photo that we liked in Discover and we grabbed it as a preset and then applied it to one of our photos. So super easy. And you can see the popular ones. You can see all the edits. Here's mine. Check that out. Maybe somebody's going to remix it. If you want to, you can search for it. Search for my name and you can go in and you can, uh, you can change that. Uh, let's go down here and see if we can find one more. I actually like this. Yeah, this discover part is just amazing to have all these new things in there. It's, I don't know. It just makes me feel more confident in, in photo editing. Oh yeah, it, absolutely. It, it so many ways. I love seeing people have fun with this stuff. So we just grabbed another preset of something that I liked that I'm like, yeah, it had coffee and it looked pretty cool. Let's grab one of our images and drop that preset on there very quickly. Uh, I believe that it was this one. Great. There we go. So you can zoom in here. And again, you can turn on that before and after by just clicking in the bottom right. Yeah. So right here, bottom right is before and after. And you can see the difference in contrast there and how it really like pumps it up. That's really cool. Yeah. I like too. you could think of, you could search for things like morning or, you know, evening or something even so specific that you're trying to do. Again, going back to creative briefs, seeing what your brand's all about and finding someone else that, that, can, that has already done something very similar, at least it's a head start. I like that idea of, I think even Elizabeth said, it's like a collaboration with all these people. Yep, absolutely. Um, all right, so Nick, let's go ahead and- homework? let's Yeah, let's, I was gonna say, let's talk about collaboration. Let's go yeah. ahead and uh, take a look at some of the homework here. So in our Discord, which is right down here, discord.gg slash ACC, that's the place to be and that's the place that you can post your work and let us know what you're working on 
and we had asked you to post some photos. Uh, and since we are in the photography segment, we will be editing these over the next few weeks, but we have some photos in here, but I specifically wanted to call out one user in our Discord um, that low key artsy uh, <laughs> did some Great photos name. with us. Uh, and what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy and paste these real quick into a Photoshop document. These are so nice. I'm not going to, it is not letting me. There we go, we can see the before and after right there. So here is the before and the after. And wow. Nick, what tools that we've looked at do you think are in play here? Ooh, I'm gonna probably guess exposure is a big one. Probably texture. Um, gosh, I mean, I, I can't believe it has all that detail hidden within that dark picture. Yep, I agree. It's really great. Yep, I think that one that's happening here as Contra. well as the select sky, um, there probably oh, yeah. is some masking happening, right? So that, mm -hmm. that we're just getting the kind of uh, basilica or the building that's there. I think that we're using yeah. some masking to get in there as well. That looks great. Even the, the one below it where it, it didn't have any green whatsoever. And then all of a sudden this new image, you look at the reds and the greens that are just popping out from the space down below. Yep. It's beautiful. And something that is uh, happening here as well, it looks like there are lens corrections. So if I go back and forth really fast, let's just actually, can I hold this down? Yes. So you can see as it goes back and forth, it looks like it has a bubble, right? That's kind of popping out at you a little bit. Do you see that like small little difference? Yes. So that's a lens correction. And what that's doing is it's basically telling uh, there are uh, profiles that are saved in Lightroom that say, hey, this lens warps the image by this much and it's fixing it. So it, it's yeah. changed that. So it's less bubbly and makes it a little more yeah. authentic to real life, a little more flat. Um, and yeah. Great. And low key artsy is in our chat. Look at that. Hello. Yes. Thank there you so go. much. That looks great. Good work. Really need to see that change. What a difference it makes. That's really cool. Awesome. Oh, look at these ones. Elizabeth dropped in with the lizards and everything else. This looks great. <laughs> oh, yes. A little trip to the zoo. Very nice. Very, very cool. So Raspberry your homework there. over the next few weeks, um, over the next week, really, because we will be back live again next week, is to take some photos. Uh, take some photos, edit them in Lightroom, use those presets and save the presets, um, grab from other people. It'll make it super easy for you to make some really cool photos. Great, man. All these tools, we have way too much at our disposal, man. It's too much. <laughs> uh, and Nick, what would be the other homework if people were looking for, I don't know, like a big reason to get involved in something that's coming up in a couple off. months? You cut off again. Oh, sorry. What would be uh, right. what would be something that they could do for homework to get involved with the community in a larger way in person in a couple months? Oh, that would be our Adobe Max. Definitely. If you guys are in the LA area, please consider coming. It would be so great to meet a ton of people, but um, hopefully for sure you can interact with it online as well. But what an incredible opportunity to uh, meet and greet with everybody. Can't wait. Can't yes. Wait. So please come to Adobe Max. It's going to be a great time. Uh, we'll both be there, I believe. Nick, yes. you'll be there, right? For sure. I'll be there. We yes. can hang out. Uh, come meet us. Come hang out. Uh, maybe we'll do some portfolio reviews. We'll have some fun. Who knows? But thanks so much for joining us this week. We will be back next week with another episode of Adobe Office Hours. Next week, I believe that we are talking about masking. So we'll be working in Photoshop and Lightroom, showing how to like remove things, remove backgrounds, isolate, change colors, uh, really get detailed on your images so that we don't have to do overarching edits to everything. So tune back in okay. next week and every week. What time and where, Nick? That's 2.30 p.m. Pacific time every Friday right here on Adobe Live. Yes. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye, guys.